What's up, Purple Power Ass Crew? Today's video, we are putting tunes in my 1991 Model YJ. If you guys want to look back, there's the video for my soundbar to where I put speakers and to your light. So the next logical step was to put some a radio in to give the speaker something to do. So, hence our video for the day. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so I do a lot of cool videos. All right, nothing, Gavin. Let's just get on putting a radio in. Okay, what we're putting in today is the dual XDM16BT. It's a media player. It's not like a full-on CD player or anything like that. So it's really a shallow mount. You see, here's the total depth of it. And the reason I'm going that route is that, for one, you know, you got your airbox back in behind there. A really deep mounted speaker. Some of your wiring may hit back there. But that's not the 100% total reason why I'm going with a shallow mount. For one, I'm not going to waste my time with CDs because I can drop all my CDs on USB, drop it in here, and there you go. We can have tunes on the USB, which I have purchased already. A little small 16 gig, I believe it is, but it's really a shallow one. doesn't stick out a whole lot. Plus, it's got the auxiliary input. Now, later plans. I've got my sound bar in place now. What I'm thinking of doing eventually is I replace my sound bar with a sound bar go across here with a homemade one, a DIY fiberglass one. But I'll make me a center console come through here where I'll put my shallow mount radio up there plus my CB probably mounted up there as well and whatever else I feel froggy doing. So that's I bought the radio in preparation of future plans. Not to mention it's only 20 bucks really. Now the first thing you want to do is remove this cover. One, two, three, four five and six phillips head screws <laughs> yeah phillips head screwdriver get these screws out now that we got that cover off you got a big gaping hole going on right here what we got to do next is prepare the radio for installation what you want to do is get hold of your speaker cover this grill section right here and pop it back slow and easy all you got is gentle tug on it they'll pop right loose don't get all crazy men handling it and break something okay I'm gonna use the other hand but you see what I'm doing now your radio comes with a set of keys per se to speak these contraptions right here we're gonna use those to remove this cage piece from the radio and what you want to do is here's your tool 90 degree bend here got a little tab sticking out here this 90 degree bend you want to face it outward away from the radio this little tab faces inward toward the radio slide it in pushing straight inward then oh there it goes it gets to a certain point that it pops past this piece right here which pushes this outward unlocking it from the radio so whenever you, then you pull this right here it pulls it just enough that those locking tabs have been disengaged from the radio cool so let's do the other side that in taking your time so it doesn't jump off track because you can make it go off to the side left and right which doesn't do you a whole lot of good and now see real close that edge has now unlocked this right here pushing just enough that that tab facing inward toward the radio grabs the radio hasn't done it yet there it goes then when you pull it unlocks it from the radio so now you can take the side of the radio completely out of the cage Ta-da! There you go. Now remember, radio facing like this, cage goes like that. Now some cages it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but just a general rule of thumb. You now I've taken like that, and you see it's top and bottom. And normally you got your little rivets here on the bottom, that indicates the bottom of the cage as well. And again. Most of them are watching pretty well, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it. The symmetry is even, both top and bottom. See tabs here, tabs here, you locking tabs. So really, you could probably flip it either way, it wouldn't make a difference, but I'm just picky like that. So now, let's put this cage in the cage in the Jeep. Then we'll start doing some wiring. I've got my little locking tabs pushed in place as best as possible. Of course, over here on this side right here, you really don't have much to bite to, so it's not going to grab anything at all. Push those over. And if you see right here, now the ones you want to push down, not this one back here, this is the tension for the radio. These have the little triangle side of them, like this right here. 
those are the ones you want to push down to hold the cage inside your dash see right here 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 do not push this one do not push that one and so on for the top and these in the center you can push the, the long tabs you can push these down and I'm not getting a whole lot of bite out of them so I ain't worried about them but here 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 leave those alone because when you slide your radio in those are what keeps tension inside the cage that holds the radio in place so now let's do some wiring now, it's pretty commonplace for most of your radio manufacturers to, to have your wiring schematics on top of the radio or, or on the bottom of the radio or wherever they want to stick it on the radio. But also the directions that come with the radio also has the um, wiring diagram inside of it. And here's our wiring harness. And matching your colors up here, red is ignition. Then make sure yellow, battery positive, black is ground blue will be your remote turn on which can be for your power antennas or turning on your uh, amplifier for your subwoofers or or an amp that drives all your speakers inside your rig which leaving the rest for speakers and which those are listed through here so with that being said I'm gonna so I can find me some power sources underneath this thing to get the proper voltage to it and setting up a wiring what I did was I just kind of roughly grabbed one end of the wire, unrolled a piece, so I went way over to where the fuse block is, which is underneath the dash on that end, which gave me the red wire and the yellow, which I'll be pulling here in just a moment. That gave me a rough length of how much I needed. Then I make all the rest of my wires match, because there's a blue for the power turn on, for the amp, black for ground, which there'll be some cases to where I'll have too much wire, which is fine. I'd rather cut it off, trim it where I need it underneath the dash than putting the wires together underneath the dash. See what I'm saying? So pre-build your harness to your connections here because what I'm going to do is after I get all the four of those wires cut, I'm going to go ahead and crimp them together on this. That kind of simplifies the process of running your wiring underneath the dash. I built several harnesses for you know, different cars and stuff. If you pre-build your harness from front to rear, it really makes a lot easier on you than running one wire at a time and splicing wires together under these weird situations. So And just in case you guys missed it on the soundbar video, to keep your wires nice, neat, and tidy, you got a length of it coming out here, feed it through the hole, let it lap over, come under, like that, and just do a simple knot here. And you won't have a mess inside your wiring drawer or wherever the heck you throw your wires at. It'll keep it nice, neat, and tidy. There's your tip. I showed this on the soundbar video, but just in case you see the radio video, before the soundbar video, there you go. So to keep life simple, I'm gonna use these butt connectors. I mean, I just pull that off. Now these are for a much bigger, larger gauge wire than what these are. So what you can do is twist these together like this, fold that in half, put that over like that. And what did I do with my crimpers? That is not them. Oh, there they are. Oh, I need to find my good crimpers. These things suck. And then we build the rest of the harness like that. I know some of you saying, well, won't you just go get your right size connectors? Well, I could, but I don't feel like leaving the house. So, I'm going to use these because I got them. All right, I'm going to uh, crimp the rest of the wires on. Just the power wires, not the speaker wires yet. Now, I've got my harness taped together and ready to run. What I mean by taped together, I've got my power grouped up together as one. Got this short section of tape around all four. Around all three, around three wires, leaving the ground out. Four wires, three four wires, three, four wires, three, and all four wires. Now, why am I doing that? 
Well, doing all four of them all the way up this end is kind of overkill, but... Now, why am I doing this? Whenever I push it through that hole right there where the radio goes, it's got to cut a hard driver going over top, meaning going over, uh, going over to the driver's side. I'm speaking in spotting terms here. But going over to the driver's side, I got to snake this stuff above all the cabling for your um, heating and for the all this other junk that's underneath the dash. If you've been underneath the dash, you know what I'm talking about. So it's easier to have all four of them grouped together like that to snake it over top of all that. My ground run is the reason, you know, in places it's only taped together as three because these are going all the way over to my fuse block. Of course, these two, then that's my remote turn on. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my remote turn on over there too, just for neat, just keeping it nice, neat, and organized. But whenever the time comes to start putting in amps, then I can separate this wire from the rest of it. But my ground is a very short run. So as I go over top of all that mess, I need them grouped together as four. But as soon as I get my ground to the point where I can split my ground out, uh, the rest of the harness, I'll unwrap the four grouping to the point to where I need it. So if it's all the way back here, now if I take it apart only to this wrap and leave this wrap intact, that means this four wrap right here grouping four wires together keeps my harness together in a not nice organized manner. This will again help you run it but also in the event that you need to diagnose issues or whatever you're not going to be looking underneath there saying oh my gosh what's that wire running to? When you've got them grouped together and you trace it back you see it's all going to your radio. So this could help you out later on if you got doing kind of electrical diagnosis. I built uh, wiring harnesses for a three quarter ton Chevy crawler I used to have years ago. I uh, had no Mustang and a 68 coupe that I built the harness for. Whenever you group tail light wiring, fuel sending unit, whatever the case may be, whenever you group your wiring together, it's easier to trace it from front to rear, rear to front to uh, diagnose issues. That's the reason I always like building my own harnesses when I can you know, for whatever rig I'm building. Because as much as I like building harnesses, ironically enough, I hate chasing electrical gremlins when things start going nuts. So that's where factory harnesses, they just drive me insane because there's so many different ground ties, splits this way, splits that way. Factory harnesses are just way too overly complicated. So, there you go. Let's put this thing in. Okay, here's the part where I may catch a little bit of disagreement out there. And that's fine. You wire it like you want to and I'm going to wire it like I want to. Now your red ignition 12 volt positive, yellow battery 12 volt positive. Okay, let's put that in a little bit different terms. Battery 12 volt positive means it's constantly got power all the time. It does not matter if the key is in the on run position, the keys can be in your pocket. You've got power all the time on battery 12 volt plus. Ignition 12 volt plus, that only has power Whenever you turn the key on, the key is in your ignition. You turn the key, your dash lights light up, your car, your your car, Jeep, whatever the case may be, is running. Then you have ignition 12 volt power. Now, why is the reason for that? Battery 12 volt plus is for like your radio settings, your uh, clock settings, and stuff like that. It stores power to keep you from losing your uh, preset channels for your radio and equalizers or whatever the case it is you may set up. Now with the ignition 12 volt plus, what that is, it gives your radio power. Whenever you turn the ignition on, then you can jam out, okay? Well, what I do oftentimes is, sometimes I just want to be sitting, chilling, hanging out with people, stuff like that, and turn the radio on just to jam a little bit while we're just, you know, chilling out. I don't want to have to have the key ignition on and have the whole Jeep powered up, you know, with the key ignition on just to listen to the radio. So if you take that 12 volt ignition, run it to 12 volt hot all the time, then your radio has power all the time to be able to jam out, to chill, you know, chill with your people, and you know, not have the rest of your rig on. Because for instance, my light bar that I've got in my uh, bumper, it's got a daytime running light feature. So as soon as I turn the key on, my daytime running light feature turns on as well. So I don't always want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both the ignition and battery wire, tie them together as one. Then put them in a, a fuse block, a fuse terminal up inside my fuse block that has power all the time. Because then what I have the capability of doing, again, like I just mentioned a moment ago, I can be chilling out, hanging out with people, whatever. Don't have to have the key on for a little bit of background music to you know, to, a little ambiance music or whatever. Yeah, like my ambiance is normally like five finger death punch or something like that. Cool. So, again, 
yellow red wire I'm tying them together is one straight to a 12 volt positive battery terminal which has power all the time so I don't have to have the key on to jam out okay that is my choice if you want to wire your ignition to the proper place wire your battery to the proper place have that I mean I've done several cars that way matter of fact my Mustang's wired that way so it's your choice okay so I'm gonna plug it up now Pick up a wiring hanging outside the dash there, and notice we only got two speaker wires right now because all we're wiring in is the sound bar. Because these speakers are one that over there is not non existent, this right here is still dead, and so we're going to change those out later. So for right now, we're just going to concentrate on those. So, wiring done now, we got to prepare our radio. So, what we got to do, get a four way screwdriver take that off now if you got a CD player you may have one here back here and you may have another one up top to support the CD tray inside there it's like on a uh, shock absorber type situation so let's get that screw out and we'll plug this baby up and see what we get out of it okay once you get the tag removed push your plug in until you feel it snap in good and you look at the radio face like what it ain't working okay just push the power button oh, push the power button one handy there we go and there we go it's all lit up sweet so now like a very not so smart and not so intelligent person i didn't mark my speaker wires from the sound bar so i don't know which one's which i do know which one's positive and negative because if you look real close you got a white stripe and no stripe but i do not remember which one was left and right i should have marked them but i didn't so what do you do what do you do i'll show you since we're hooking up the rear, what we want to do is separate our greens and our violets. No, wait a minute. Rear, rear. Yeah. What we want to do is separate our greens and our violets because they are for the rear speakers. The green, green, black be the left, violet, violet, black for the right. So we're going to separate those out here. So we got violet. And then there's our greens right there. So that's the wires we're going to be playing with right here for the moment. So what I'm going to do is take two of them, hook them up to speaker wires I just stay 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 I just strip those back so I'm gonna do is play any mini mighty mo pick a color tie them together turn on the radio see which one I get sound from so if I get if I hook it up and I happen to tie it to the green ones and that's which we happen to be on the left left here and my right one works guess what I know that I need to change the wires over but if I hook the green hook these wires up to the green ones and it comes from the left rear guess what i scored i tie those wires together then do the other pair let's see what i get let's see if i get lucky wrap the wires around each other just so i can get sound coming from a speaker and i do not have the antenna hooked up so it's on default the 87.5 right now which will give nothing but static when i turn it up and i'm getting sound from the left side and let's see i've got it hooked up to the green green left rear and I've got my polarity correct because I've got the black stripe green black left rear negative which is wired to my negative speaker here negative speaker wire I did remember mark that because my striped one is my positive on my speakers and the one with no stripe on these wires is my negative so I can go ahead and connect those take these two wires connect them to my violets here and I've got my rear speakers wired up Okay, I've got them taped up where they won't short out. I've got my radio antenna plugged in. I'm going to tuck my wires up inside here as I feed it in. And come up from behind here and pull them through so you don't pinch any of your wires on the frame here and the radio. It got my little USB plugged in right there. Got some tunes stuck on it. And I say tunes. What I actually did is went to YouTube's uh, back end thing to where I could download free uh, MP3 files to test out with. Because here's how it works. If I was to put on some cool music like some Five Finger Death Punch, uh, Pantera, or you know some mainstream stuff, you know, I get this thing called a copyright strike, which doesn't end well with my uh, account. Which 
can either get that video taken down, or in some cases, if you have if you uh, too many copyright strikes, you can get your whole channel taken down. So we're not taking that chance, okay? So this music I'm using right now is stuff that our YouTube gives creators for free to put into their videos and not get copyright strikes, and you can still monetize your videos and all that fun stuff. So this YouTube, don't be messing with me. This is stuff that came from you. All right, let's go check this out. Okay, right now this is not pair because I've got it in Bluetooth mode because I didn't want to flip over to FM radio and get a copyright strike. So we hit mode again. Auxiliary in, which is this little port here. Uh oh, 105. We ain't gonna do that. Uh, USB. Now, again, this is stuff that I download from YouTube's creator side. Overall, yeah, I got tunes to put it that way. It ain't totally hammered. It ain't shaking the Jeep. It ain't like, you no, know, I'm at a sound stage somewhere. But hey, I got tunes now. So, the next step, we're probably going to be working on the dash speakers next. You know, that chaos that you got to get way up inside the dash to put the speakers in. Or, I don't know, I've got a subwoofer I might put in. I've got a few different options I can play with. So, you just got to make sure you hit that subscribe button so you figure out what do I do next. Cool. If you like that video, hit me a little thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave us cool comments down below. And these little speakers don't sound too bad for $15 speakers, so hey, I'm cool for now. Anyway, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave cool comments. Peace out. Later, y'all.